In this video, we're going to be learning Markdown, which itself is a markup language. Markup languages are absolutely brilliant for producing beautifully formatted text documents. I myself use Markdown in my roadmap and my course guides, and for every project that has a good readme, that's formatted using Markdown too. Not to mention that you can also use it in Discord messages to make them look pretty, or even if you are writing a Reddit post, Markdown works there too. It's an absolutely brilliant thing to learn, and where in a Google document you might select some text, you could make it bold, you could underline it, Instead in Markdown, everything's done in one file and it has an extremely simple syntax that you can use to produce amazing text documents time and time again. In this video, we'll be learning it in seven minutes. We'll absolutely rip through it. So as always, if you enjoy the video, smash the like and subscribe buttons. And with that said, let's get started. So the way that we're going to learn Markdown in this tutorial is by making a really good readme.md. It's the most common application for Markdown. It obviously has loads of other uses, but I'm going to write one for this new repo that I've made that's going to have a whole lot of recipes that also happen to be made in Markdown, written out in Markdown. The recipes are absolutely brilliant. I consider myself the king of comfort food. I recommend trying them. And if you like the repo, the link is in the description down below. And it'd be great if you could star it. Would super appreciate that. Anywho, to create our first readme.md, we're going to make a new file. So we right click in the folder directory, hit new file. And to create a markdown file, we need to create a file that has the .md suffix or extension. If we hit enter, that's going to open that up right here. And it's currently a blank file. Now there's a whole lot of syntax rules that we're going to learn. And the first one is how to create header text. To make header text, header one is going to be a singular pound. Header two is going to be a double pound. So if we have a singular pound and say chef James recipes, that's going to create a biggest header. And I'm actually going to say Chef James Comfort Food Diary. Comfort Food Diary. Just like that. So that's the title, the biggest header. After that, we can have an introduction. And this is going to say only the most amazing. This is going to italicize text. If we wrap it in a singular asterisk, that's how we create italic text. Only the most amazing recipes that will soothe any life quarrels that you may be experiencing and alleviate, I have no idea how to spell that, any stress, sorrow, or despair, and replace it with the, now we're going to make the uh, some bold text, and to do that we use the double asterisk, and replace it with the ultimate fulfillment, get it, because you're full, joy, and happiness. So what we just did there is make a paragraph that has some italic text and some bold text. We didn't add anything at the start. The rest is just going to be plain text. Now after that, the next thing we're going to have is a recipes section and we're going to give that a second header. Now that's going to be the double pound header two. So it's not going to be as big as the first one. And in here, what we're going to do is make a, a checklist. So this is pretty cool. Essentially how the checklist is going to work is we're going to use a dash and then we're going to actually draw out a checklist. So if we create a box using the square brackets, we can put an X inside it. And in here, I'm going to name the recipe macaroni cheese. And then after that, I'm going to have an empty checkbox with a space. And this is going to be spaghetti bolognese. So those are the two recipes coming. Now underneath this, we're going to have a new section and it's going to be double pound and it's going to be reasons you should star. We're going to chuck in an emoji here, the star emoji, uh, the repo exclamation mark. And this is just to demonstrate how we can create a list in Markdown. So to do that, we simply have the asterisk and then a space. And the first reason is going to be for delicious recipes because I appreciate your support and to become happier today. So that's how we can make a list. Also good to know is how you can make a code block. This isn't really relevant, but this is just to demonstrate it. If we write the triple backtick and then another set of triple backticks, anything in between will be a code block. That's just good to be aware of. We can also have tables in here. So we could say uh, dates published and we could have a table and we literally draw out a table. So it's really easy. I could say recipe, use the vertical bar to separate the different 
columns and then here I could have the date and then underneath we have the vertical bar we draw out some horizontal lines using the dash and then everything underneath is just filling out the table so there's mac and cheese and the publishing date could be 2024-02-05 so just the other day vertical bar and then the spag bowl could be 2024-03-03 so you're anticipating that recipe it's going to be excellent underneath that we could have a triple pound so this is the next tier of header and this could just say relevant pictures and in here what I could have is another list so this is a numeric list and this is going to say mac and cheese uh, and then under here we could have a picture of spag bowl and what we're actually going to do is take this a step further and make these links so to make a link, all we do is we wrap the word that we want to show up in these square parentheses and in the circular adjacent parentheses, we add a link. So I could say spag bowl and in here, what I could do is find a picture. I'm just getting the link to a picture. I'm just going to paste in that link right there to demonstrate how we can use a link. And then at the very bottom, I'm going to have a block quote. So that's going to be the lesser than symbol. And in here, I'm going to say the best food I've ever eaten. Uh, and that's going to be Gordon Ramsay. So that's high praise. And now what we can do is we're going to push this code. I've saved it. I've already created a repo and I'm going to uh, commit it to GitHub so that we can actually view the formatted text once it's been interpreted. So here's just a demonstration. I've opened up the readme and we can see that this is now completely formatted for us. It looks absolutely beautiful. Here we can see we just have some plain text. If I open up the code, all we can see is that plain text right there. We have some italicized and bold text. So if we come back, there's the italicized text and there's the bold text. We have the recipes. It's got the little checklist. We've got the empty checklist. We've got a nice list. We've got the secondary headers just like that. We've got the dates published and we've got a nice table and we've even got some links that we can open up to pictures and we've got a nice block quote down the bottom. Now that's not absolutely everything you can do with Markdown, but that's the most common stuff that you'll encounter and it's an absolutely brilliant skill to have. I'd highly recommend you write a readme.md for every coding project you ever make. And it's just super cool. If I come into the uh, Mac and Cheese MD, we can see that it looks super clean. We've got some bold text, some nice lists, and it's just a great way to format information in general. Anyway, that's the whole video. If you've enjoyed it, smash the like and subscribe buttons. Be sure to cook some of these recipes. And if you do, tag me. I'd love to know if you guys enjoy them. Star the repo too if you're a legend. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the Learn to Code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.